Hi, uh, somebody on my YouTube channel ordered one of these guys. Actually, I suggested I'm ordering this one because he had a very basic one that would only do the uh, battery. He ran into some issues. My board and his board are a little bit different. Anyways, I'll do a little step-by-step -step with uh, installing this guy. There's two different versions, I guess, of even this board. There's one where, where it says 12 volts and the 5 volt line. On his, he actually had to attach to 5 volt to 12 volts to get his to work. On this one, I don't have to use a 12 volt at all. I can just get away with just using just the 5 volts. So that's how I'll show this guy being set up. Just keep in mind that if you don't get no video, that's what your problem most likely is, is you need to attach the 12 to the 5. Or just attach a wire from here to the APM 5 volts. Doesn't matter which way you do it. And that's the other thing. I'm not really going to be getting into details how to mount it. I'm just going to be showing you where the wires go after that. Wherever you decide to mount it, it's up to you. I found that if you take off this case, you can mount this right on top of the APM and have the uh, lid still shut. But uh, again, it's up to you guys. All right, so the very first wire you want to hook up is uh, from your transceiver. The middle one here, the video out, or this would be the video in, but on this, it gets plugged onto the bottom. Like that. And that'd be video out. Now the next wire would be the uh, ground and positive. The kit comes with a bunch of wires. Some of them you should, uh, you're gonna have to cut in half. So this one, the ground plugs there. positive. Now you also need a ground for this side as well or you may need one. So what you can do there is just attach cut one of the wires in half that you're going to use for your TX and your RX and just touch it here and then just join it up to this guy over here or just run a separate wire. It's up to you. So okay so on the APM I just plug it right into these ports up here. So the ground rail is the first row. Again, it doesn't matter where you hook these up. There's actually a wire if you have a power module that we left unconnected in one of my earlier videos. This actually has your volts too, so you could actually get positive and negative from that guy too if you really wanted to. And the positive. So that's where that goes. So right now that, that should be good enough for you just to plug in your battery and to see if you actually get video. You should get an OSD. So just with those three wires, you should already see on my monitor over there that I'm already getting something. You're not going to get uh, any information, obviously, because we don't have the TX and the RX hooked up. So if you get absolutely no video like that, most likely you have to attach this red wire to the center one, as I said before. Oops, up too high now. You'll have to attach the positive 5 volt to this side here. All right, so now the RX and the TX. I already, can't, I already have the connector because I have um, telemetry already on my unit. So basically, I'm just going to show you where I jumped into the wires. Again, you can jump, you can splice into them anywhere. I'll just unplug it again. So down here, I got my yellow and my blue. Basically, the yellow one will be your RX, and the blue will be your TX. You can splice into it up on top here too if you really have to. I don't have the connector here. The kit never came with one. That's why I'm splicing into this. I'm also leaving this unplugged for now. So now we go back here again. So this time we're going to plug in the RX and the TX. So the yellow would be your RX. And the blue is your TX. Just like with that setup now, we can plug it in again and see if we get more information this time.
And there you go, now it's connected. So you can move around your compass and stuff to just make sure everything's moving around. I don't think you can see anything on there moving really. Maybe if I move this up. There you go. Right, so that one step is done. The reason why I'm doing it in a step is just so you don't get too confused with all the other stuff because uh, the video part can get a little screwed up. Right, so if you have a, this is really bad as well. Here's a, just a really cheap camera I have. And what I did was I spliced onto the positive and negative here. So now again, this just now gets plugged into my APM over here for your positive and negative. These parts you guys should already know. And now this video here is all that's needed because I'm sharing the same ground right now, so it's fine like this. So I can plug this guy on the top. And now I'll plug in the battery again. Now you can see the video and the OSD and it's basically done. So with this setup here, if you have a really cheap camera and happen to have the same uh, mini OSD as me, you only need the one, two, three, four, five, six wires to get this thing uh, running. All right, so now I'll unplug it. Unplug this guy, get rid of this camera. And then I have this camera here, the AT300. This one, it can be a pain in the ass as well. So here's my cable here. Came with the USB cable already all done up. So you have a five volt one, you have a ground, and uh, you have your video. So on this one here, if you're using the, um, if you're not gonna be using the battery, you need to plug in this five volts. And also at the end of this video, I'll show you a mod because if you do happen to use the battery only and you don't want to use the 5 volts here, you actually have to mod the OSD with uh, cutting a trace and you need a resistor. So on this guy here, now the 5 volts, I'll plug in to the APM 5 volt rail. Again, you can plug it anywhere. You can uh, splice it into this red wire here too. The video gets plugged into the video in. And then the ground. Sorry for my color codes here. Pretty awful. And I'm not using the audio plug because my transceiver already has a mic on it. So this is getting really messy. And I'll plug this cable in here. Turn on the camera. Plug in the battery. And the problem with this camera as well, so now you can see that's working too now. Problem with this camera is I can't get rid of the OSD that's built into this camera. It doesn't have an option. Maybe the SJ4000 has one, but this cheap clone does not have the option for it. So it's really messy until you push record. Once you start recording, most of it goes away at least. And the other problem with the, this camera here, I notice, is uh, we're going to have to figure out a way to custom the OSD because it's not filling up the whole screen like my other little one does. It's too big. But anyways. Alright, so that's how you hook up this little mini OSD. That's not really the point of this video anyways. I just want to show you my hack because I like hacking things. So I'm going to jump on that and show you guys a close-up of the hack for this guy. Alright, I'm back again. I have it all plugged back in. I have the camera again set up here. But this time what I did was I left the, uh, the 5 volt wire coming out of the camera USB cable 
unplugged. So right now all I'm using is the actual uh, battery that came inside this camera. If you notice on the monitor up there, if you can see it a little bit, there's no video. So what has to happen now is you have to mod this mini OSD. At least I figured a way to get it to work at least. Um, the ground wire is still hooked up and everything, so technically it should be working. I used my meter and figured out that the uh, this ca at least this version of the camera doesn't put out enough uh, volts, I guess. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to zoom in to this guy here to show you what I did. So it's basically really important right now too, is if you have everything set up the same way, try plugging in the, um, the 5 volts as I showed you before. Even if you're not going to use it, just plug it in once just to make sure it's actually working. Or alternatively, what you can do is take out the two, the video out and the video in when everything's hooked up and just touch these together. You should get your video. If you get your video, this means you're going to need my mod. I'm not really sure why you would want to use the battery instead of using the uh, 5 volts from the uh, quadcopter. But regardless, I found a fix and I'll show you guys how I did it. All right, here's the my mod. If you want to use the internal battery on your um, action camera with the mini OSD, and for some odd reason it's not pushing out enough volts like mine was, this is the mod you have to do to it. I'm not exactly sure why you would want to do this anyways, but um, whatever. Anyways, from this guy here, I traced it out to... Uh, a resistor marked 85X, which turns out to be a 75 ohm resistor. What you have to do is cut to trace right there, or you can just remove the resistor, but it's easier if you just cut the trace here. Anyways, just cut the trace right here, and you can test with a meter if you have one from this side, your video in to ground, and you should get no continuity. And if you do, that means you have to go back again and keep scratching here until that trace is actually removed and this resistor is out of the circuit. It's actually sending the signal to ground at 75 ohms. So the next step, what you have to do is attach um, a resistor. I attached a 1000K resistor for my tests from here to here and it works. So I'll just solder that guy's up to show you. It's pretty ugly right now, like most of my stuff, but whatever. Right, so that's with the resistor attached. You could probably just attach it in the cable itself too, like on the outside of the shell from the, the video in to ground, and you might still be able to get it to work that way. I left this really big just to show you guys. In reality, if I was gonna do this, I would probably actually get a surface mount because I do have 1000K surface remounts resistors. I believe they're 103, unless that's 10K. But whatever, I have some anyways. Or you could just make this a little bit neater as well inside. All right, so I'll just show you guys this working now. I have it all wired back up again. All I did here was I cut the trace, added one uh, 1000K resistor to it. And uh, the positive wire is still unplugged from the camera. And I have just the video in going here and the ground going to the APM. And there you go, now I have the OSD and it's all working. Again, this camera sucks anyway, so I'm really, this mod is kind of pointless. I don't know if it's only this style of camera that has this issue, but uh, it's pointless anyways because the whole OSD doesn't fit on my screen anyways. It's oversized for some reason. Anyways, I thought I would show you guys that in case uh, anybody else runs into the issue and needs to have this mod done, and that's how you do it. All right, thanks for watching, and that's it. Bye.